everyone's kind of debating back and forth between do we go for claws, do we go for iron balls? But I feel like iron balls is way too powerful to give up here. Yeah, I would agree. However, would you just like give that to like your partner? It's like you could still go for a different class at this point. That would definitely not be you know the worst move. Is be like you know you go for iron balls, you go for the square. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Adef started, but he's currently in the intro screen. If he just doesn't go into the actual game, we're fine. He did go a little too early, but he should be able to go now. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Just just go ahead and skip the right. cutscene, Adef. <laughs> it's fine, dude. Just go. Just go. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> Jesus. I think the uh, the starting stats were just too good to give up, though. It was like I think it was sixteen strength with the iron balls, so I feel like that's kind of way too good to give up. Yeah. I would definitely agree with that. Oh, son of a gun! I have to do this for every damn screen. So I'm assuming we're gonna have uh, Kata and Chris going for this egg heal plus zero, or maybe one of them will concede the square and maybe try to set up another square. Oh Jesus, that's a big zero. I'm uh, definitely anticipating that as a big play as, as, as the first play. Yeah. I um I'm not too sure. I feel like I feel like honestly rushing Loretta is not the worst idea. Um. Is there any underground that would really push it though to make it even more viable? There's a there's a mimic tier consumables only. Oh, and there's also finger slayer blade though too. So that is actually really big because you have to actually start the Ronnie quest line to even get finger slayer blade. So finger slayer blade, Loretta and Radon. That is a really real that is very powerful. Um mm. so I'm definitely expecting that to be rushed even more now. Yeah, we're not going to see the 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 torrent list. I heal, I guess. That's that's too risky of a play. Yeah, I mean I mean some people still do do it, but it's only if it's like really, really necessary. I think there's other threats on the board to where they're like, you know what? It it's too risky of a play. It's not worth our time to like really have one of our players fall behind possibly two to three minutes just because you're trying to um you know, rush a heal that easily, because I don't think everyone's gonna be going for it no that makes sense looks like we have adef selling his armor he's selling the clothes off his back for money um there is a rune too in front of the church of ella so i don't really know what exactly that was for but maybe they just don't know about it <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know either <laughs> um all right everyone's kind of just currently in character prep right now uh, I do like. I think as soon as they get torrent, I think we'll we'll see exactly what they're gonna go for or what they're gonna prioritize. So I'm, I'm yeah. I'm waiting. I'm just waiting for that. Looks like we also have we have a, a a tiny bit of Lyrnia here that can synergize with Loretta. We have uh, death birds. I, I believe those are most commonly at least the the death bright bird is most commonly killed in Lyrnia. I'd imagine. So a tiny bit of Lyrnia there. Um, we do have Sacred Flask plus 10, or uh, 10 Sacred Flask charges. That is, you know, like we said before, part of Team Positive Vibe's uh, bread and butter. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I don't think anybody is going for Egg Heal right now. I think they both think the same thing. They're both not willing to take the race on Egg Heal, which is very, very interesting to me. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that. Normally, there's at least one person that will try and go for the Egg Heal, but uh, everyone's kind of avoiding it. Looks like Chris is going to get started on the two catacombs, I believe. Which get, is uh, oh. not a bad play. Not a bad play at all. Pup here getting swiped by the Urtree Avatar, already dying, trying to get the 50,000. And, oh, okay, looks like Adif is doing uh, Take Raya's Hand of Volcano Manor as a quest line. So, there they are still rushing squares, but not the ones that I guess we anticipated. He rolled into her, so we got the 20-second the time loss. Yeah, I that is so annoying. Like you could, you could fart in front of Raya, and she'd be like, "Oh, please don't hurt me." It's like, <laughs> okay, relax. All right, I'm sorry. I had too many boiled crab. I'm having a hard time. We also have. It's interesting to see because we actually have Kata going for the the same square that Chris is, probably unintentionally too. I don't think he thinks that Chris is going for this. At least now that Akiel has taken so long, he probably knows by now that. It's not a race to a kill, um, but they are unintentionally racing to uh, two catacombs, which is like kind of funny. Yeah, 
Is there duelists on the board? Is they okay? That possibly not, but it is one of the faster ones that you can clear. So I'm assuming that's why uh, Kata is on the duelist here, which I don't think is a bad idea at all. Um, Chris here going for the watchdog, maybe going for the duelist afterwards as well. Those are probably the two quickest ones. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, yeah, Chris here going for the watchdog. It seems like. Uh, they might be also trying to combo one of the cemetery shades. This might be what they're trying to set up here. Oh, yeah. No, that's very true. Uh, nope. Kata's going straight for that watchdog now. Very he, interesting. I think he has a lead. Yeah, I think he has a lead here in this race. He definitely has a lead. 110%. Uh, Adef here almost completing already the Take Raya's Hand to Volcano Manor Square. Currently talking to her and uh, going to be teleporting here to Altus. And I believe Pup that, might be doing the same thing after she got some money. A, it's such a fast square now with the uh, with the graces unlocked because you, you end up getting the Altus Highway grace, which is very, very close to the deck to slip. So th this square is like honestly pretty rushable if you're uh, if you're team positive vibes. This is, this is actually a pretty good play. Yeah, I, and the little combination here from Adef I think is really, really nice. He not only is setting up for Take Raya's Hand of Volcano Manor, but he's already collecting Golden Seeds on top of that for the 10 Sacred Flasks charges. So he's doing both at the same time while traveling. So this is actually like a really, really nice two-for-one deal, I would say. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised oh, by that. But it I looks think it's like a really Chris, is going, Chris is going for Shades here, but he might lose the race to Catacombs as a result. Oh, uh, yeah, potentially. This catacomb is just as long as the one that Kata is in right now, but Kata's already almost at the end of it. So I think Chris is going to possibly lose the catacomb race, but Chris could still win the cemetery race. So that's the one good thing here is um, he will possibly lose the corner square uh, top right, but will still be able to block it with the cemetery shapes, which is on the same exact diagonal as that catacombs. Hmm. And there it is, Adef going to take the hand of Raya uh, to Volcano Manor. Gets to mark that square first square on the board here for Team Positive Vibes. Very, very nice. Let's go. GG's to them. Kata here starting up the uh, Earth Tree Burial Watchdog here. If, you know, uh, barring a incident here, he should win the uh, Catacomb race. But as you guys are seeing, <laughs> the uh, Iron Balls moveset is not great versus these bosses that have kind of like concave hitboxes. Yeah. But uh, Kata here making quick work of the boss. Um, you know, Iron Balls, it's an easy strike weapon. And Honestly, a no-brainer if, if you're trying to rush the square. Oh, Chris actually memory of gracing out! He's like, oh, great, Ooh. that was two Catacombs. I'm leaving. But it's still Cemetery Shades, Chris. You can still do Cemetery Shades. And it looks oh, like Kata no. is going right to Aikil as well. This is huge momentum for Team Kateri. Very, very big momentum. Yeah. I don't know. That might be a little bit of a misplay here, but uh, especially because maybe he's not eyeballing the Cemetery Shades. Maybe, maybe he thinks something else is better, like another square is, is, is higher priority right now. Maybe yeah. Sleeping Golem. Yeah, that might be the uh, the other thing that he is. Yeah, I would agree. Maybe he's thinking, okay, you know what? I haven't even done the first Cemetery Shade yet. Maybe he's doing his second one here in just a moment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just go with Sleeping Golem block instead, which is... That's okay. I think that's that's a fair enough play. It's on the same diagonal. It's still a block. You know what I mean? You have iron balls. It's not going to be a terrible fight. Does I, he I, think that it's contested fair. here? Is is that the reasoning why he's like he he memory of graced out of the uh, cemetery shade? I believe so catacombs? because uh, if you get two catacombs, you'd think okay, one of them is maybe watchdog, but the other one is cemetery shade. But Kata was right. just faster, so he already has the first one. I haven't even done the fight yet, so he's going to make it to the second one even sooner than I am. So mm -hmm. I, I think this is a good play, technically. It's a good reaction play. Yeah. It's just that, obviously, yeah. we know that he did not do uh, the, the Cemetery Shade at all. So yeah. uh, it's so easy for us to, to look in retrospect, right? Exactly. And uh, nice a guild fight here from, from Kata, by the way. Getting some decent RNG. Um, does miss the headshot here, though. Should be able to, uh, if he gets another stomp attack. Okay, gets the flying attack. That's pretty good. And it looks like uh, Adef here is working on that uh, Sacred Flask 10 charges Yep. after taking Raya's end. This is actually like one of the only synergies that exists with the uh, one of the one of the flask squares here is, uh, you know, really good play here from Team Positive Vibes. As we know, Adef is, 
usually the one that is uh, on collection duty on these missions to run across the map and collect as many flasks as possible. I wonder what his play is going to be afterwards. Um, yeah. But yeah, we see Chris here working on that that golem, that sleeping golem here in Lindell. It looks like he'll be getting this because it's not contested at all. Um, Pup here is just getting her character set up. I think she's going for Loretta. She's going yep. for that middle square. And we're seeing this, <laughs> this diagonal develop more and more, and this is becoming way more of a threat. Obviously, Chris here is on the uh, Sleeping Golem, but as we said in the pregame during the planning phase, this was a massive diagonal that we pretty much knew that both teams would be going after. Yeah, I think they were... The, were they eyeballing the uh, the diagonal this whole time? Because it seems like it, since uh, Kat has went for the first two squares already uh, on the same diagonal, and now Pup is going for Loretta. I think they're just, they've are just they been eyeballing that diagonal this whole time. So this is a really good play from uh, Chris already, blocking that whole diagonal by going for Sleeping Golem and just hoping that Kata is going for uh, Cemetery Shades. And he does get that Golem, by the way. Very nice job. That's a nice block. Two for two it's right now. Block. Team Positive Vibes versus Team Kateri. Now, if you're Chris here, I think what you might want to do is consider uh, looking into doing Radon because that column one is looking really, really good with the Finger Slayer Blade and the Radon kill without NPCs. That might be your next move if you're positive vibes. Yeah. I am... It's like... Oh, go ahead. Kata here is performing the uh, Celia Crystal Tunnel skip. He's Very going nice to land too. first try. Very good execution there. I wonder, so with the plus zero fists, I do wonder how Loretta is going to be. Not too bad, obviously, but uh, with this health bar, she does do some decent damage. She definitely does do some decent damage at this point. So uh, I really wonder how this fight's going to go for Pup. Yeah, as same with the, uh, the Falling Star Beast here. Like, we do have the Iron Balls, and they are... Strike damage is very good versus both Falling Star Beast and I believe against Loretta. But yeah, we're just we're gonna see here how the fights go. Uh, it looks like yeah, that headshot's not doing very great damage because I think these are still plus zero for Kata. So it is gonna be quite the long fight. And here we are, Chris grabbing Stone Star keys, trying to get ready for. Where's he going? He's going back. Um, oh, is he upgrading? Oh, he's not even going to round table. He think this is faster. That's fair. Plus that's three. That's very, very interesting. Yeah. Wow. Good move using the blacksmith tool instead, just so he doesn't waste time going to round table. That black that anvil is way quicker to plus three your your balls. Sense. And uh, Kata getting a nice stagger here on falling star beast. Get some headshots in. Should be able to get the repost as well. Now pup not on Loretta. Grab the grace, but is now pivoting actually. She Going is. Somewhere else. She, she is. Uh, she just started friendly NPCs. She did just kill Bach, and I think Kenneth Height might be next on her uh, her hit list. Maybe also Pot Friend. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe she thinks that she's not being contested because we have you know Sleeping Golem, Sacred Flash Charge, those squares being marked. I think she just feels like this is not a high priority square right now, which is you know probably the right play because I don't think any of uh, I don't think Chris or Ada are anywhere in proximity. Uh, of you know blue Loretta, so I think this is a good play for Kateri. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a bit of a changeup. The, the reason why I think also is because both diagonals are now making that center square useless. Uh, that sacred flask charge just blocked the uh, left uh, to bottom right diagonal. They already blocked the bottom left to top diagonal, top right diagonal with the sleeping golem. So that center square has lost a lot of value already. Um, so th instead, she's like, okay, let me just go for a different square and start progressing other things instead. Uh, also, honestly, the row five is very quick to complete besides the Ghost and Gloveworth Bell Bearing. So I think she's just trying to make sure that they do not progress that line too far. Pod yeah. friend, pod friend, by the way. <laughs> sorry, I missed it, guys. I'm sorry. I was analyzing the board. Pod friend. Uh, hold on. Let's uh, 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 this one. Hey! There we go. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I missed. It. I, I should add these scores while I'm while I'm here. Um, hold on a moment. Uh, I'll do it later. It's fine. Uh, let's go back to this. <laughs> okay, right, and like 
Yeah, uh, Adef is going for the Lightning Ram. Oh, really? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Pup right here, I think, is going to finish off her friendly NBCs with Kenneth. Kenneth, I, I believe, is the next fastest one, while Chris here, I think he might be going for his Sour last Cemetery shades. Shade. Yeah. Well, he didn't go complete the other one. He's supposed to go back. Um. So there, there, there is... do Pop Friend. How about this guy? Hey! hey. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think uh, he's supposed to go back, act uh, obviously, and um, actually complete the other cemetery shape. But he definitely has priority on that square, so that's gonna be really, really nice to see. Yeah, uh, I mean, making the pivot early on in the game uh, on the first cemetery shape because he thought he was being contested, it was a good block for the diagonal. But he maybe could have gotten this done a little bit quicker. Um, yeah. We'll see how this plays for Team Positive Vibes, but it looks like they have a a pretty good. Uh, column two here, I would say they would probably leave the 30 arcane for last because it's a very, very steep investment. Um, but we have Adef here working on the rams. Let's see his uh, his ram rolling skills. What's that, four or five at this point? He's just steamrolling them. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't miscount. Uh, players have been doing that lately where they just they, they start counting and then they stop because they're focusing on rolling. And they're like, wait, how much was that again? <laughs> how, how much? How many, how many did I say it was? Some pristine ram rolling here from uh, from Adef. Oh, there you go. Nice little cemetery shade five from Chris here as well, making sure that he fishes out those backstabs. I think Adef might be missing one more sheep. He is just running around trying to find <laughs> someone. Who is uh, willing to get rolled on? Oh, and that one just rolls away from him as well. It's like, nah, <laughs> not me, man. I am not the sheep you're looking for. And uh, I think, yeah, uh, off screen, Puppery ended up finishing her friendly NPCs with Kenneth Height. Uh, I think she's going to grab the Flask of Wondrous Physic here. It's got, you know, pretty good synergy with this square. That's a nice little upgrade for her character. She has a pretty decently upgraded. Uh, Iron balls at this point, and then that sacred flask or that flask of wonder physic is going to buff her damage by, you know, just that much more if she ends up grabbing the uh, the charge physic as well. There we go, Ada finally getting the ten uh, ram uh, words. Uh, the ten, <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> what does he do? Why is he continuing? Is he just making sure that he got ten, or maybe I don't know. <laughs> or he's just my, I don't know. Uh, uh, 10 rams 10 rams guys 10 rams <laughs> chris getting the cemetery shade square as well by the way and it looks like pup might be going to caleb now she's probably setting up death birds she just picked up that sacred blade ah, so... yeah, yeah, yeah that'd make a lot of sense yeah. oh stat dump here from kata by the way grabbing the 30 arcane on the board wow So there is that. Wonder, so now Adef is in Halley Tree. I think he was trying to snag that 30 Arcane before mm, they did. But now, wow. honestly, if anything, now he can just get the money and just, like, help himself. You know what I mean? He can take that money. He can level all the stats he needs, get that health up, get the, you know, damage up. All he all he can just – what's going on with my brain today? I don't know. <laughs> he can damage, guys. All right? Big damage. Expect big damage from Adef at this point. Yeah. I think he's just trying to get a little bit set up now because he did spend uh, the first part of the game. He he took Raya's hand and then he got the sacred flasks and then he did ashes. He did the landing ram to kill ten sheep. So he doesn't really have much money right now. So I think he's just getting set up here. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'm expecting someone to go for Letterita here in the next five to ten minutes. To I'm be surprised honest. it's it's stayed that long, honestly. Yeah. Um, I think Pup will be the first one there because she has priority. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, that is the big mystery, I guess, uh, of who's going to go for it first because that column three, honestly, is not even that bad. The only long thing is to collect the full Halic Tree Medallion. Everything else is very, very doable. So that column three is a bit of a threat, I would say. And if anything, if Chris or Adef go for it, they've got a nice row three to look at as well. Yeah, so I think they probably should they probably should get this Loretta Square as soon as they possibly can. 
because I feel like, you know what they might be thinking? They might be thinking that oh, they might want to force Team Positive Vibes into going for it, and then maybe after uh, Death Right Birds here uh, from Puppery, she might go right into that Loretta. I think that might be a good play because it might incentivize Positive Vibes to end up going for that row three. Yeah, she's got to be careful here with this Death Right too. Got to be really careful here with this Death Right. Sacred Play putting in some work for sure. I believe this is a plus zero uh, Miner's Harpoon. harpoon yeah, claim is. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Which I don't know if the stats on that are too great, but at the very least, she is dealing the damage she needs to to get rid of. Oh, she's got to be careful here. She's about to frost proc too. We haven't even gotten into phase two technically with the Death Bird uh, doing that explosion attack. I These bosses are, are insanely tough. Like, the de especially the death right birds. Even death birds are, are not great. Oh, here we go. One of the fun attacks. But if you hug close, you should be fine. As she does. Let's get pecked to the forehead. Oh! <laughs> does a jumping and gets tagged midair. Very unfortunate. That's, that's death right birds there for you. Yeah, I feel like a Deathbird might be like one of the one of the harder early game squares to go for without, you know, much health leveled. I feel like that one is just it's it's way tougher than, you know, something like a Cemetery Shade or, you know, two catacombs. Like I feel like this might be one of the toughest early game squares to go for. Yeah. No, I definitely definitely agree on that. It's uh But it's a huge play if you pull it off. Is the other thing. Absolutely. You know? So there, there is that as well. It's definitely tricky though. I'm still expecting uh, someone to go for that Loretta. It's kind of driving me insane that it's still open, to be honest. Uh, looks like Adif here is going for the 10 Talismans, by the way, which is on row three, which means if you go for Loretta, that row three is going to be huge for Team Positive Vibes. They are currently tied five to five in squares. This is an interesting match. Like I said, this is. I feel like this match is going to be the interesting match of the day. Because this is a well balanced uh, uh, fight overall. And Pop sure. dying to Death Right Bird again, getting Oof. pecked, turning into Bird Feed in Lake of Liurnia. Oh man, yeah. She did go back to the Iron Balls. I believe they are just going to be more efficient because they can proc that, uh, that stagger a lot quicker than the Clayman's Harpoon can. I think if you give her maybe one more go at it, she'll be able to pull it off. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It looks like, okay, uh, Kata is going for O'Neal now. They're looking at that column three now. So someone's got to go for Loretta, please, for the love of God. You guys are all promoting column three slash row three. Feels lag, man. Yeah, I mean, I think it just seems <laughs> like, it just seems like both teams don't want to, don't want to invest the time in the Loretta. They want to make the other go for it first. All right, let me just refresh all of them real quick. Get them all back online. There we go. There we go. Okay. Apologies. Yeah, these iron balls are doing huge damage for Puppery here. There we go. Uh, right on the head. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Way better than the Sacred Blade. I think I think the Sacred Blade was a little, uh, what would you say, um, overestimated yeah. for damage. I mean, it's if you have a setup... Uh, iron Ball, I think that's just way... Oh my god, I've that never seen that dodge before. That, that was, was almost like a frame trap on that one. That was that was very scary. Kata going for the good old babooshes here on O'Neal, making sure that he can get as many babooshes off as possible, trying to get that column three activated. I really have... need to see Chris here on that Loretta, man. And instead he's yeah, in Redman we... Castle. We have Chris probably working towards Redon. I think he might be trying to promote this uh, Column 1 threat. Um, if they can threaten both Column 1 and Row 3, I think that'd be a very good position for them. Because oh, it, yeah. really, it doesn't really look like Kateri has any big threats besides that Column 3, which obviously would end up being blocked by the, the, the blue Loretta, right? So I think Kateri here needs to start putting some more pressure on the board. However, yeah, you got to keep in mind that Puppery does already have that grace for Loretta, so she's she's in position to snipe that as soon as they see that row three threat build up. As soon as that row three builds up just to like one more square, I guarantee you Pup's going to be like, all right, time to go. 
she will go and pivot to that grace and will take it before they can. Um, so that's that's the thing you got to keep in mind, I guess, is that what if they already have priority on this? I think Loretta is the biggest priority and not Radon without summons. Who's going to do that right now? It's There's no you know real incentive. Yeah, there's not really an incentive for Kateri to go for it because uh, they can't really get anything out of that anyway. I, I don't know. I mean, if you get Loretta now, like, you have NPC Invaders and full Halic Tree, and that's it. Because, like, right now, they already have O'Neill on the board, currently 6-5 to five for Kateri. So now they have two squares for Column 3. Yeah, this threat's becoming very, very real. It is also, like, there's also the threat of... Uh... Obviously, there's Loretta, but then also, you know, Kat, Kat is a very experienced speedrunner. He probably can pull off the uh, the the skip into Castle Soul, followed by a, a pretty quick O'Neill fight. You know, being very experienced with uh, the All Remembrances speedruns, I think Kat could easily go for that Halic Dream Medallion. Yeah. Chris here doing some nice Charged R2 work. Does miss the second uh, Charged R2 on Radon, though. Does have the Rot Grease on the Iron Balls, which is a really, really good idea just to make this a little bit quicker. Uh, makes it a little bit easier for himself as well. I should be able to add the... Uh, oh, well, I'll do it in a second. <laughs> Gets the stagger here, and Radon punches his head mm. while he's down. You know, I gotta say... The damage is a little bit underwhelming on uh, the Chris on Chris's Iron Balls. There is the Rot coming through, but uh, I don't think these Iron Balls are that upgraded. No, they're only plus three, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. well, actually, wait, hold on. They might be plus nine, actually. He did go to Shifra for the twos and threes. So maybe it's just the stats. Yeah, he did seem to prioritize health in this match. I think maybe he may have learned from yesterday's match uh, that health is a very important stat. There's some 16? of these late game squares. That does not look like 16, but all right. That's that's a oof to 16. Oh, does miss that charged R2. That's that's kind of rough. Yeah, these these iron balls are 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 not great against bosses. Like I said, with those oh! concave hitboxes. I see why Chris did it. There was the uh, the twofer, the redound without summons, and also dagger colossus and fists only. So he just marked two for mm. themselves. That's a very mm. nice seven to seven now. Deathbird's marked by Looks Puppery like here. Looks like Puppery here is making that play. She's entering uh, Carrier Manor instantly. As soon as she sees that Radon Square, she's heading for that Blue Loretta. Okay, very, very but Adef here doing doing the NPC invaders now. So they're already like, okay, they're probably going to be on Blue Loretta. Adef, mm. get on invaders. We're going to block that while I go for column one, maybe. That's a good read. That's honestly a really good read by uh, by Positive Vibes here. They're working the board really well Yeah. in this, in this current board state. Currently still 7-7 seven to seven right now. Uh, Puppery going for that Loretta, going up the staircase here past that huge giant. Ada, if you're going to go for his invaders now. Very nice and, uh, place from both teams. Kata working on Halitree Medallions only for it to get blocked by the NPC invaders. And then what do you do if you're Team Kateri? You don't really have any more bingo lines to go for. Yeah. Uh, that's Then you just start, you know, uh, going for anything. Yeah, I mean, I think... Chris is going to head underground here, um, but he has priority on this Crucible Knight and Misbegotten duo. So I think even that, you know, that will probably end up getting taken away off the board. So, I mean, the rest of these squares are kind of long game squares. And Chris has priority on most of the underground ones. Yeah, with that Radon pickup, he definitely has priority on Finger Slayer Blade. Uh, although here is the thing. Does he really? Because he doesn't have Loretta. He's not going to have the Ronnie quest line activated. Mm, so technically, true. Pup kind of negates Chris's uh, lead with the Radon kill by already having Loretta down and already having the access to the quest line where he still has to do this whole segment. Is Kata here working on Nox Muda Noxtella? Is that his next play? I think that would make sense. Adef here going for his second invader, I believe, or third invader. Yeah, I believe Kata is going for a Moon of Noxtella. That'd make a lot of sense here. Um, Chris, I believe, going for Loretta now. Yeah, so if if Pup doesn't get 
Radon down soon, I think Chris will end up taking the lead on that underground race. I think she she can identify that and is on the way to Radon. Yeah, she's definitely on her way to Radon right now. You're you're definitely right on that. Grabbing the smithing fours. Oh, Adef getting absolutely sliced and diced. <laughs> Anybody want some fresh sashimi? Holy guacamole. That was a lot of damage. Yeah, very, very uh, unexpected here. Anarius being, you know, what you'd call a uh, an early game NPC, but that bleed is nothing to mess around with. That double Reduvia goes crazy. Yeah. No, it's a very, very mean NPC <laughs> invader for sure. Narius is probably one of the harder NPC invaders in the game. Uh, on on the same note as Okina and Hoslo, uh, those are the ones I probably despise the most. Yeah, with these Iron Fists though, you can kind of spam the uh, the running R one, and the NPCs don't really know what to do. It does work way better on the Star Fist with the bleed buildup, mm -hmm. um, but it shouldn't really have too much of an issue with the uh, the Iron Balls anyway. Okay, Chris grabbing Bewitching Branches, by the way, uh, for Commander uh, O'Neill for the yep. Halic Tree Medallion, which I think is a really good uh, little pickup there to make it a little, that fight a little bit easier for himself. Absolutely. So, so I think he's actually trying to block Halic Tree Medallion. I, I, Kata has the first half of the Halic Tree Medallion, but is not going for Commander O'Neill, so this might actually be a little bit of a snipe from Chris. Depends on what his next play is, because he, he actually has quite a few plays that he can be going for. He's definitely going Looks for that like... Moon of Noxtella, though. He's... Yeah. Definitely looks like it. Yeah. And Palpri right now in Altus. Possibly going for... I don't know. What is she going for? Can't really tell. Tr not Tree Spirits. Ada, if you're... Facing his nightmare, which is <laughs> Narius. This guy destroyed me so many times. Uh, I, I, Jeez, that bleed proc is goes, it just goes crazy. Yeah. Sadly, my first hitless knows... one was Reduvia, too. So killing this guy, I had to like learn him. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of just spam this running R1 with the, the fists here. The fists actually do have priority, but, I mean, that bleed proc is so scary. Finally, Yura showing up to do his job. Oh, never mind. He gets distracted <laughs> by his stupid skeleton. Classic Yura. <laughs> Got that golden retriever energy, runs down a river, and then gets distracted by something that's not important. Yura. <laughs> Help your man out. He's struggling. Never mind. Actually, Adef does. Oh! Oh, shh. I didn't say anything. Yo, Team Blue, man. Oh, Team oh. Blue. Okay, well, she just died, too. This is not working out for me right now. Um, really not working out for me. I don't know I don't know what to do. Which screen am I supposed to go on? Everyone's dying. <laughs> Chris, you're oh, having a... Oh, it looks like Chris went back to round table after collecting the, the Halig Tree medallion, trying to work towards that uh, <laughs> the NPC invaders. I think he might be on that duty now, or maybe just was an accident. Uh, yeah, well, Encha invades regardless, table. yeah, so I think he's just trying to... Oh, my God. Chris has got to be careful here with Encha. Oh, does get the last hit. That was a little close. I'm not going to Those are some, some pretty beefy beefy hits here. Wow. Yeah, I'm not really sure what play uh, Puppery is going for here. Maybe some... Is it last tiers? Because I know there's two down by Wormface. Yeah, I'm not sure. Really not sure. Okay, Kata now going for a Crucible Misbegotten Duo. Which still means mm. Halic Tree Medallion is still open. And yeah, Invaders. Yeah, most likely going to get taken away. Yeah, Chris is already on his way to uh, the Castle Soul Skip. Very interesting. Very, why are they keeping it open like that? Because, like, honestly, a Halley Tree Medallion? Yeah, okay, the fight of O'Neill, definitely kind of tough. Don't get me wrong. But I'm very surprised by this by this play. Very surprised. I can see why Chris leveled his health now. Because that fight is uh, very, very dangerous. Especially with the uh, little white spirits in, 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 the, in the fight. I very think leveling nice health skip. here is a huge play. Yep. Very nice skip here from Chris, by the way. Getting into Castle Soul first try. 
going to get ready here for O'Neill. Has the Bewitching Branch as well. Locked and loaded. Adef here. Dealing with Narius. Kata going for that Crucible Misbegotten duo fight. Narius out of flasks. Realize, uh-oh, drink empty. <laughs> Looks like Chris is, or Adef is getting the, the loop going with that running R1. Okay, Chris, all he needs now is that other Bewitching Branch to there tag. We there we go. This should be some nice free damage here on O'Neill. Oh, he's got the good one, too. The one with the dual swords is so much damage. And it looks like, okay, so it looks like Puppery now is also in Radon Castle. She's probably going for Radon so that she can open up that Finger Slayer Blade, mimic her consumable only. Huge stagger here on O'Neill from uh, the I Spirits. I did see Puppery, uh, she was in Ulta. She grabbed uh, Poison Bloom. I, I, I think that could be uh, crafting something poison related for Radon, maybe? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Nice fight here from Chris, though, on O'Neill. Very, very nice. O'Neill. That Horfrost stomp doing some work. It's a nice stagger headshot. That plus 16 really coming into play on this one. I don't know. For some reason, this is the same damage he did on uh, Radon almost. So I'm a little surprised. But uh, hey, it works. If it works, it works. Currently, Kateri is in the lead, though, 9 to 7. I Looks think... like the oh. the damage came through because of that frost proc. Uh, he procced frost True. with the whore frost stomp on O'Neill. So. Ooh, very nice fight from Chris. There it is. First try on O'Neill. Going to be grabbing that second half of the Halic Tree Medallion. Going to be stopping column three. And uh, hopefully then start working towards column one. However, it looks like that uh, Puppery might be on the move of stopping that. Yeah, so this has just turned into a, a majority game now that this bingo line has been shut down, or, you know, pr very, very close to being shut down. This has turned into pretty much a uh, a majority game. Yep. It definitely is. So it's just a game of who has priority and which squares at this point. Currently 8-9. to nine. This, is, this is doing... This is doing... This is going really well for both teams, I would say. Both making the correct plays, making the correct reads. Uh, Kata here fighting the Crucible Misbegotten uh, duo. Having a really, really good fight. Puppery on the same token doing the Radon fight. Yeah, I mean, and I think Chris still has to kill Loretta to go underground and start that Ronnie's quest. Yep. Um, so I think Puppery is going to have a slight lead here if it comes down to it. Very nice dodge I from don't... Puppery. She might be setting up uh, for the Mimic Tear Consumables only that may have been part of the Altus uh excursion there that we had maybe crafting something to uh do the mimic here with consumables adif here is still on his invaders are going to go for the anastasia invader next hopefully this is his last one that way they'll be nine to nine on the board and Chris yeah i think that is altus so he might be going for oh he might be going for the uh the recipe for mimic tier consumables only which is the uh the lightning pot recipe right right yeah, uh, and it looks like Kata here taking care of the Crucible Knight and Misbegotten duo. I wonder what his next play is going to be. He is going back to round table and will be invaded by uh, Ensha. I wonder if he kind of has the same idea of starting up the from the NPCs or the NPC invaders, or simply just trying to clear him out. And Kata dying to Ensha, by the way. Oof. Had a bone to pick with him. I was like, why didn't you show up with the medallion a little bit sooner? I've been waiting this whole time. Gideon has me on a schedule. It looks like Adef has just finished his NPC invaders, by the way. Score is now 9 to 10. 10 for Kateri, 9 for Positive Vibes. Puppery should have this boss here, uh, Radon, in just a moment. One more charge or two should do it. Sorry. Gotta be careful. I hate that move. That move has cost so mm. many people the Radon Square last season. That little spinny, spinny move is devastating, especially on low health. Very, very nice mm -hmm. fight from Pup. Very, very nice fight. And uh, Adef here continuing to work on that Talisman. I think he's grabbing the Turtle Talisman now. I don't know how close he is to it, but I, I am almost certain he has priority on that. Hopefully yeah. he doesn't he doesn't end up buying the uh the two the the circlets for round table hold. Hopefully he he remembers <laughs> that to buy the mirrors. 
Very nice, though, from Adif, by the way, also marking that NPC Invader square. So now it's currently 9-10 to 10, uh, for Team Cattery in the lead by one square. Chris going for Team... Uh, team... For Tree Spirits. For Team Spirit, baby! Um, <laughs> but is... Uh, so is actually Cata. So they're racing on Tree Spirits, but Chris being a little bit ahead, actually, in this Catacomb. Yeah. So this is going to be uh, another race. This might actually be a huge time sink for Kata if Chris, uh, Chris gets this first. Might push them into the lead. Yeah, I mean, I think if Chris has the lead here, what are the other tree spirits? There's like the one in Stormvale Castle. Was it Was it him that... Uh, did anyone go to Stormvale this game? I don't really no. know where, where the closest tree spirits are. I don't think board. anyone went to Stormvale, but they could definitely go to Stormvale and also the one in Altus next to that camp. Is another mm. tree spirit that they could do for sure. Mm -hmm. Chris getting tagged here. Tree spirit being a little bit of a Pac Man. Nice damage though from Chris coming out. Adef making sure he buys the right talismans, moves on to what is Weeping Peninsula for the other uh, Crimson Medallion that he can buy. Like Kata here, uh, a bit behind. Yeah, more than half HP already gone from the Tree Spirit. There it is. That's the kill here on the Tree Spirit for Chris. First Tree Spirit down. Kata gets grabbed. Has to restart the fight with a quit out. Restarting the fight here. Hopefully it goes better this time. Does not get grabbed on the opener. Very nice. Yeah, and I think Chris here might have a more upgraded fist than Kata as well. So I think he might just win this square because he's already heading towards the Galmir Tree Spirit. Yeah, definitely agree. And uh, Ada here finishing up the Talismans, actually marking the square. Huge, huge for this is a tie, ten ten right now. This is this is a very very tight match. Yeah, I wonder who has the advantage. Because uh, Pupper here, if you remember from the Deathbird Square, is up three Lyranid bosses. So that could be a square that could be very easy to grab from Pup. Also, with the underground priority, I feel like a slight edge goes to Kateri, even with this Tree Spirit Snipe. Oh, 100%. They have priority on Finger Slayer Blade, at the very least. Maybe through consumables only, both Chris and Pup have the same uh edge right now but it looks like uh puppery is actually going downstairs right now so she is actually really positioning her team uh to take the possible victory here because they already have uh three bosses in the urinia plus now they're gonna have finger slayer blade and mimic their consumable only priority yeah very very interesting to see very very close for sure Looks like Kat is going to be going for that other go uh, Ghost Glove Ward Bell Bearing that's across the bridge to finish off that square now. Huh. Okay. I, I You know, I must say, I, I think Kateri might have this, but I, I don't want to curse them. But it seems like they, they know what they're doing. They have a game plan. The match has been closed all the way throughout, but it looks like they are hitting their stride and they're 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 getting into that rhythm. Yeah. They. I mean, if... Uh, if Kata gets this uh, Ghost and Grave Glove, Glove or Bell Bearing 2 square, and then Pup gets the Finger Slayer Blade and maybe your Consumables only. That's 13. Absolutely. So this is uh, overall a very interesting match, though. Like I think they've played... Uh, everyone's played amazingly. How long is the Catacomb that Kata is about to go into? Uh, it looks like Chris here is going for the Tree Spirit to the right of... Out, out these double doors to the right. I believe yeah. there's a Tree Spirit there. I think he's going to be able to take that one out sooner. Um, and then after that, I think Chris is going to go for Finger Slayer Blade or like Mimic Tear Consumables only. But Puppery is already underground. She's already on her way yeah. to do both those squares. I think as soon... Honestly, as soon as Puppery marks Mimic Tear Consumables only... I think uh, Team uh, Positive Vibes is going to notice that they might be a little bit in trouble here. Right. You know, the onus does lie on Puppery, though, because she has she's responsible for Lyrania bosses with uh, those three that she already has, Mimic Tear Consumable only, and the Finger Slayer Blade. I feel like the onus here is on Puppery to execute these squares, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. No, I definitely agree, but I also got to keep in mind that these two squares that she has to complete aren't too difficult you just you're picking up an item 
and you're throwing one pot at a puddle. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you, the, the, the bar is, uh, of execution is luckily pretty low. Just make sure, obviously, that, uh, you know, you, uh, you just do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably has a lineup, most likely. If I was doing this square, I'd have a lineup. Yeah, there, there's definitely a lineup here for sure. Uh, everyone's got their own uh, lineup, but there it is. There is the one shot. Gets the Mimic Tier consumable only. Up. Very nice from Pup. All she has to do now is pick up that Finger Slayer Blade. Chris marking Tree Spirits, by the way, on the board. 11 to 11, but now Chris probably seeing... Uh-oh. There's Finger Slayer Blade, Ghost and Glove Ward, Bell Bearing 2, and 6 Lyurnia bosses. What do you pick? Yeah, I mean, that, that Ghost and Glove Ward 2 is going to come out of nowhere as well. It's going to come as a surprise. Because uh, Cat Ear has not marked a square in quite a bit, so... I feel like they're going to get a little bit caught off guard with that. And uh, it looks like once we get that Finger Slayer Blade, it's just going to be uh, Ghost and Glove War and then Lyrna bosses, and then that's it. I mean, not even. It's just Finger Slayer Blade and Ghost and Glove War. That's already 13. Mm. She can just leave the Lyrna bosses open. It's a, it's a bit of a trap, to be honest. Um, and Chris, I believe, is going for that Finger Slayer Blade, but he doesn't even have Loretta yet. Pop is already at Mimic Tier Consumables only. Like, Chris knows that she's going to get that before him. She is porting back right now to the Loretta Grace to activate the quest, but uh, she has huge priority on this. Right, right. It looks like Adef is going to be working towards that uh, Ghost and Glove Ward Bell Bearing 2 as well, getting into uh, this little room here with the chest. Grab that first half. But Kata, sadly, is already on the second part of this square in uh, in Mountaintops. Very, very close game. I I'm, I'm actually, like, very impressed with how both teams are playing this one. Yeah, this one overall was, I think it was just a great match from both teams. Very, very well done from both teams. Making the right calls. Um... Sadly, I do think that uh, that that whole Loretta uh, Radon Finger Slayer Blade combo was kind of ne ne uh, neglected by uh, by Team Positive Vibes a little bit too long. Uh, they really gave a huge advantage to Team Cadre with that. Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, I think the play here from Kata to set up the Tree Spirits and then at the same time go for the Glove War Bell Bring was actually a great play because even though he got sniped on the Tree Spirits, he still had this in his back pocket. Yep. No, I definitely agree. He did realize that, you know what, Tree Spirits might not be the right call here. I think uh, Bell Bearings might be the better call um, to complete that instead, and that's definitely paying off here for Kata. Pup just uh, dealing with the good old Celevis dialogue and also EG dialogue. And then she's able to leave here and go straight to the Finger Slayer Blade chest and uh, mark that 12th square for her team. I think Chris here, has he, has he started the Ronnie's quest yet or does he still have to head towards... He still has to do Loretta. He Oh, he still has to do Loretta. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what he's doing right now he's uh going somewhere i'm not sure i'm really not sure he's in limgrave he is in limgrave <laughs> this tree spirit fight on cata screen though is taking a hot minute this is a very tanky tree spirit in mountaintops i do wonder what cata's uh iron balls are at i'm assuming they're also at 16 kind of like chris's were uh, unless he has been uh, been focusing on just doing squares as quickly as possible, they might be just be at like six or nine, um, but should have this boss down in just a moment. And he is, okay. Chris is now in. Uh, sorry, my brain froze. He is currently now in Noxella. No, sorry, the Kron. Not Jesus. Kron. Yep. But Pup as you can see, executing Pup here. the skip perfectly towards yeah. the Finger Slayer Blade. Very, very nicely done. Gets a gets a spear in the head, is now a unicorn. There it is. Square marked from Kata for the Ghost and Glaive, uh, Grave Glove Ward Bell Bearings 2. And then Pup going to be capturing that Finger Slayer Blade. And there it is, 13 to 11. GG's for Team Kata. GG's. 
very, very good match, especially to open the day. Yeah, very, very solid match from Team Cattery, for sure. Making good the rebound right calls. from yesterday as well. But also, like, very great performance from Team Positive Vibes. Um, you know, definitely way better calls today than they had yesterday as well. So I think, like, both yeah. teams learned a lot, to be honest. Uh, know exactly, like, how to play it a little bit more efficiently. Um, sadly, like I said, that Finger Slayer Blade, Radon, Loretta, um, Mimic Tier combo, those four squares, that was a that was a huge, I would say, uh, uh, what's the word? Uh Huge help for uh, Team Cadre winning uh, this board. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let me see if they are available. Hold on just a second here. And that was uh, only 50 minutes as well. Very, very quick match. Mm. All right, looks like Team Cattery is ready, and so is uh, Team Positive Vibes. Let me bring them in here. Welcome in, guys. Welcome in. GG's to everyone. GG's to Team Cattery for taking the dub. Um, Thank you. No problem. No problem. GG, guys. GG. So quick question. Um, what was the thought process? Uh, first, Team Cadre, uh, then Team Positive Vibes. What was the What was the thought process seeing the board minute one? And then also in the middle of the match, what were the priorities? What were the talks? Give us the uh, the information there. Uh, Team Cadre first. Well, um, I mean, we saw like a lot of the Leonia uh, synergies pretty early on, and then also additionally like a bunch of pretty rushable fast squares. Um, yeah. But yeah, and basically right away. Loretta, Finger Slayer Blade, the Onio Bosses, uh, Radan, all that is kind of connected, right? So, uh, that, but then, yeah, a bunch of early game stuff like Catacombs, Agil, and all that stuff. So, I don't know, it was kind of hard to choose what to start with, to be honest. Yeah, yeah that's super fair. Uh, and what about uh, Team Paza vibes? What was the thought process seeing the board, seeing the classes? Uh, anything specific that stuck out to you? Uh, yeah, I mean, immediately the bottom left, top right diagonal is, like, insane in terms of speed. We knew we wouldn't get all of them, like, first, because it, it, everything there could be rushed. And so I figured one of them would do two catacombs, two cemetery shades, and so I was going to do just two catacombs and only, like, do one of the cemetery shade ones and then head to sleeping golem, but mm -hmm. then Cata marked the catacomb. Cata, which uh, catacombs did you do? Watch the match back, bro. I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Uh, team negative right. vibes over here. Jesus yeah. Christ. Oh, wow. Okay. No, it was the duelist and the uh, watchdog. Oh, the duelist. Okay, okay. Because I was running to the cemetery shade after the lever, and I was like, damn, he really beat that first. But yeah, if you did a different one, that makes sense. Um. Yeah, and then so I was like, all right, let me just go kill the sleeping golem, and then I can come back with cemetery shades if he doesn't finish that yeah and i was relieved to see that you went for agile plus zero instead so um by then i knew you weren't you probably weren't doing cemetery shades um but yeah the the play at the end there was really good um from you guys like puppery going for like radon and mimic tier for finger slayer blade like we left that open too long we figured you would be going yeah. for Lyernia bosses and i was like okay i need to get tree spirits and then just run through the underground mimic to your finger slayer blade and that will be our 13 but then yeah you guys you guys did that so that was good yeah i was that was one thing that i was actually wondering to be honest was uh loretta was open for a long time uh especially with it promoting mm -hmm. not only team positive vibes row three but also you know team cattery's column three uh, it was open a little bit longer than I expected, I guess, because like that seemed like such a crucial square for both teams to get. Um, but everyone's just kind of like playing around it. Was it just uh, like a thing of expecting the other team just to grab it so you can go ahead and block it, or was it just that there were just other squares that you thought were just more important? I think we were happy to relinquish it on the pretense that we were going to get other goals more quickly, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and also yeah. on the pretense that we could block surrounding rows. Because mm -hmm. uh, we figured the value, since nobody was going to get BLTR, 
we figured, okay, well, let's get as many as we can, leave the center open because that'll be prioritized. And then, you know, I would have liked to have gotten three in that diagonal. We only got two. Uh, Chris did all of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, but for, yeah, for we, us, we, we it was... It. For us, it was holding priority over it, basically, right? Because we had the grace there. Uh, Pop had the grace. And basically, according to like what was marked on the board, uh, we are gambling a little bit. Uh, I let Pup finish the Death Birds first uh, and then go for Loretta. And it ended up being the correct play. Definitely could have backfired, but it gave us access to the Finger Slayer. It gave us priority on you know the Leonia bosses for the late game as well. So mm -hmm. um, th that was sort of basically what we are going off of. But it was on top of our minds, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to finish it the whole time. If you listen back to him the whole time, <laughs> should I finish it now? Should I finish it now? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah, that was definitely something I was like, they they should they should go for this. They should go for this man. Like it, either team, it really didn't matter who it was. I just wanted someone to go for Loretta at some point because it was such uh, it would, it would changed the, you know the way the board would have been approached if you had that threat of like oh god you know now. Uh, you know, for Team Positive Vibes, it'd be like, oh god, now there's only Radon with summons only and Mimic Tier consumable, which is already a double play as it is, because you have to do Radon anyways to uh, access Mimic Tier. Um, that would have, you know, kind of really been in, you know, in the, in the face of the other team. So I was just really surprised. I was just curious about that. Um, but yeah, great game from both of you guys. Uh, uh, great you. performances uh, from you, everyone. Nice. It was really, really fun to a, watch. It was a fun match. It yeah. yeah, it was a good one. Actually. It was very fun to play. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, of it course. Was fun, no except problem. some incidents they had, but yeah, <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah. a fun board. So <laughs> Every, everyone had incidents uh, this this game, to be honest. So it's it's okay, all good. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, blanks. Do you got anything that you'd like to ask the players as well? Uh, I just wanted to point out. I thought Kata the the tree spirits play was it very interesting because you had already set up the uh, ghost and grave glove ward. So like even though you were gonna lose the tree spirit battle, you had the the ghost glove ward too in your back pocket. So I thought I thought it was a really good play. Yeah, I was basically trying to like kind of I don't know set up some priorities in the late game because I knew that Pop was the only one who could do the underground. So I tried to cover a little bit more tracks. And I looked at the squares that we were going to get, potentially, with the underground, right? And uh, basically, if I managed to get Tree Spirits and the Bell Bearing, it would be enough. Because then maybe uh, Chris would have gotten the Mimic Tear instead. And if he gets the Tree Spirits, we probably get the Mimic Tear, so... Yeah, you guys split the map really well there at the end. Just... It was good. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you, thank, thank you. you for playing, guys. Uh, GG's for uh, this weekend. Uh, thanks for playing. Really, really was fun to watch. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and week, and we'll see you guys next weekend uh, on Saturday for your next match. Best of luck on that. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. Care. Good yeah. job, guys. Thank you. Well done. Bye. Bye-bye.